You announced today um, a relationship, a partnership with GlaxoSmithKline to tackle the next variant of the disease that we're seeing. Walk me through what that means, how quick you can operate, and when you might uh, get that vaccine to market. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have been working through the last 12 months, uh, not only on the vaccine, which is now in the uh, clinics, which we are waiting the uh, efficacy data somewhere in the first uh, at the end of the first quarter, the interim data uh, to, to also apply for approval. What we have been doing as well is taking all the knowledge about the virus, but also how the RNA works in the clinics, in the human setting, also to optimize the RNA even more so to come to a, a lower dosage and uh, to optimize it in order to have a stable backbone, to have other variants included there as well, to give a rapid response to the mutations, what we see all along. Do you know how effective your current virus that you have in development is against the mutations that we currently know about? Yeah, we are doing some uh, uh, testings here together with the regulatory authorities and key opinion leaders. Uh, it looks pretty good. At the end of the day, you will see it in the human setting. What you do is that you take the sera of uh, the vaccinated uh, uh, people and then you see how much these antibodies, which are in these sera also protective for the new strain. And it looks pretty good, so we can confirm also what other sectors so far. Um, is March, we've heard March is a good target date. Um, do you feel like the new variants will have to push that timeline out and or affect your phase three trials? That's a very good question. The question to, to be seen is, uh, even though it is also covering the new strains, how much it takes away from your efficacy uh, we cannot measure something on that because we're waiting for the efficacy data to come. We see also in the regions where we are running the clinical trial that there are also variants floating around. Uh, and so this will be all covered in the data to be expected in the uh, end of March. That's the date you're now aiming for. So Jens Spahn is talking about um, approval around that time. Others suggesting that it may take a little bit longer. When do you think you are going to see approval for the current generation vaccine to start entering people's arms? Yeah, it depends a bit on the recruitment, how fast the recruitment can be done and the attack rate. So how uh, severe uh, the, the uh, virus is in the regions where we are. So according to our planning, we will have the data readout, the interim data readout towards the end of the first quarter. And certainly we are talking as we speak with regulatory authorities to deliver the data and hopefully then the data then are good enough to do so, to have a rapid uh, approval then in the beginning of next uh, quarter. Um, at the same time, as you mentioned, you're also working in the vaccine to protect against new variants. Um, what's that like? Is it hard? Is it easy considering you have this, the, the vaccine already sort of out there and in phases? Yeah, well, we are producing the vaccine at the moment uh, as we go. Every single production uh, batch uh, is produced uh, with, with the current vaccine, also in our network. So we cannot produce it just by ourselves. So we build up a network, uh, which is uh, then producing for us as well this very vaccine, so that as soon as we have been uh, uh, given approval that we can distribute the vaccine. Will the, will the next gen va uh, va uh, vaccine have improved characteristics such as temperature stability? I, as you start to reformulate, does, do, do you start to see improvements in other aspects of, uh, of the vaccine as well? Yeah, we, we have taken for the current version we already took in the very beginning. Uh, so to, to, when we started this, uh, to pick out of a different kind of constructs, the best construct in terms of the best immunogenicity, a balanced immune response, but also the manufacturability, which includes the stability of the, of the vaccine. So we are stable with the uh, fridge temperature in the, in the current uh, one. But then certainly with the optimization on the next gen, this is also including, you're addressing exactly the same questions again. So the... Uh, balance immune response, even to go lower in the dosage and to have a higher uh, antibody titer, which is predictive then for the efficacy, but certainly also the stability to make it really stable that you have a fridge temperature um, kind of logistic chain, which is certainly helpful if you, the manufacturing capacity is built up and it's going to be built up even more so that if you have got enough capacity, then you're working to optimize exactly on the logistics, which is the cold chain. Um, we're reading a lot more about all the new strains and now variants upon variants, uh, particularly uh, in the UK. And I wonder when we talk about getting back to normal, 
from where you sit, what is normal and when is that going to be the case? Oh, that's a very good question. What, what, what is, first of all, what is a new normal, whatever the new normal is? We, what we see is that you see the variants and that's a typical, you know, that, that's exactly what the virus does. It tries to escape the immune response. Um, and uh, therefore, it's so important to work on a second generation kind of, let's call it backbone, where you really, if you see a new mu uh, mutant, that you really can bring this into this very backbone and uh, that you produce this and you have rapidly the new variant vaccine. You have to adopt it, though, with the regulatory process that you don't start from phase one, two, three, because the variants are most probably quicker developing than you, you run clinical trials. And but this is also a work, a great work for the regulatory authorities, but they are also looking into, can you do something like a flu season that you also in the flu season, you don't start with a phase one, two, three, because otherwise the flu season would be gone until you have got the data. And so it's a kind of adaptive process and we are all learning in this regard. Just in terms of the, the kind of mechanics of it, you've addressed temperature. Let's talk about finish and fill and, and all the other aspects of the logistics that go into making this all work. Um, clearly, um, finishing has been a huge challenge for a lot of people um, in, in terms of getting their vaccines out. Where are you with this? What are you short of right now? Where are the bottlenecks in the process? Yeah, that, that's really a great question. So um, it is what you can see, it's really a cross industry effort what we're doing right now. There are fill and finish, which is you can see it like generic that you can fill and finish. Uh, you need to adopt the processes, of course. But then it comes again, you know, there has been no big mRNA manufacturing so far because it was not needed. Um, and now we are talking about big quantities. So you have to, to think about the, the starting material to get it from, which was not available at the time because there was no need. The same is with the LNP. So this is the, the, the uh, molecule where we wrap uh, the RNA into. These lipid nanoparticles uh, are composed of different uh, components. This is also what you need to find then. And as you know, there are three vaccine players, uh, at least three, and two vaccines are already um, approved uh, based on mRNA, hoping us to be the third one. And, and there are huge quantities, and therefore you need to, 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 to adopt the supply chain there as well. And this will take an effort there as well. And this is see where you see the bottlenecks at the moment. Uh, doctor, one final question here. Um, there's been a lot of conversation in Europe about uh, vaccine nationalism, um, confusion about export restrictions, export monitoring. What's your take? How does that affect your production? Yeah, it's, it's a bit what I said, that you need your starting material, all the material, which is also produced globally. You know, the, the, the world is a global village, so to speak. And then certainly if you're missing certain parts and you can't get it out of a certain country because there are export restrictions or whatever, because they want to keep it for yourself, this is a bit where, where it certainly is a bit struggling. And, and then you certainly it, it, it enters also to the political level. Uh, to, to find solutions in this one, because the one thing is quite clear, we need to vaccinate the world entirely in order to get rid of the virus, uh, because otherwise the virus is coming back and then we are talking about new mutations again.